For me, Fossil is the granddaddy of fashion watches. What started out as a small business by a college dropout is now one of the largest watch and fashion companies in the world with over 14,000 employees. Now Fossil is actually headquartered about a half hour from where I live and they have a number of retail and outlet stores in the Dallas area. So I'm usually passing by something to do with Fossil at least once a week. Yet with all this, I've never actually owned one. So I decided to change that and to get one to review for the channel. So today we're going to take a look at a Decker chronograph by Fossil. Fossil's rise to power came in the late 1980s, where they began by importing cheap, retro-looking watches, throwing them in vintage-style tins, and marketing them to department stores. It was the quintessential fashion watch. But as their company grew up, so did their watches, by taking much more care in the design, build quality, and movement choices, as well as by expanding their company by buying others, like Zodiac watches. In 2012, they even bought a small Swiss movement company called Swiss Technology Production, which has led them to even create officially labeled Swiss-made fossils. So while Fossil still makes what most people would consider to be fashion watches, not every watch Fossil makes is a fashion watch. Although this one probably still is. But let's take a closer look. Now, this is the Decker Chronograph in stainless. According to Fossil, the Decker collection was inspired by aviation elements and modern design. I've also found some who think of it as an homage to the Omega Speedmaster, which I can see a little resemblance. Although to be fair, the Speedmaster is so iconic that anything with a tachymeter will probably be compared to it, or a Rolex Daytona. The first impression when picking up the Decker is that it has a nice solid feel and weight to it. I also immediately notice the wider 22 millimeter bracelet. The case is a polished stainless steel, which has a decent finishing. When running my fingers along the case, the only thing that feels rough or sharp was the edge of the case back, not the case itself. The only thing I don't like is that the holes for the spring bar are drilled all the way through the lugs rather than just on the inside. It breaks up what could have been a very nice, clean overall look. Moving to the dial, it's a matte black with white and silver accents. There are no hour or minute numerals, but the black dial has a nice three-layered tiered effect, with the lowest and center layer of the dial being a flat matte black, with the hour and minute indicators on the mid, slightly raised layer. The hour indicators look applied and in white loom. The mid layer also has circular grooves in its base, almost reminding me of a vinyl record. The third layer of the chapter ring has a train track like painted seconds and rises at an angle to meet the crystal. There are three subdials on the dial for the chronograph. The dial at the top is for fractions of a second. The dial at the 9 o'clock position is for minutes elapsed up to an hour. And the dial at the 6 o'clock with a silver outline is for elapsed seconds of the chronograph. Now this of course means that the second hand on the center is for regular time. The upper two dials have circular grooves emanating from their center, which gives it a very nice reflective look, and it contrasts beautifully with the rest of the matte black dial. Now the hour and minute hands are sticks in white loom, although when they are this wide, I'm not sure stick is the best term. It should also be pointed out that the second hand is a little bit off and not aligned perfectly. Regardless, the very large white hands, as well as the very defined chapter ring, make the watch very easy to read. At the 3 o'clock position is the Fossil logo, 
as well as a marker indicating 10 atmosphere water resistance. Just below that is the date window, with black text on a white background. On top of the case, you have what I assume is a flat mineral crystal. Now Fossil's site doesn't say what it's actually made of, but most of the retailers list it as such. Surrounding the crystal is a shiny black tachymeter with silver indicators. And this, to be honest, annoys me. Now, the whole point of a tachymeter on a chronograph is that it's supposed to be used in conjunction with the center second hands, which on this watch is for time, with the chronograph seconds being in the subdial, which to me means they more just threw it on for style than for real functionality. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the look, and you can still use it as a reference, just not how it's intended to be used. Where the center second hand points to the exact number on the tachymeter. Anyways, on the right, you have the typical chrono pushers, both metal and with a nice solid push to it. They feel and operate just like most quartz chronos do. You also have a very huge crown, which of course is very easy to manipulate. Now on the back of the case, you can see it has a highly polished, almost mirror finish screw down case back. Although with that type of finishing, I think it's a case back that will be pretty scratched up over a couple of years, probably more than the rest of the case. Now moving on to the bracelet, to be honest, I have some mixed feelings about it. At first glance, it's very nice, with a very nice solid weight to it. It's a little bit of a brushed look on the front, with a very polished look on the sides, which creates a nice visual look. It has a very solid push-button signed clasp. But when I took some of the links off of it in order to fit it to my wrist, I noticed that it wasn't a solid link bracelet even though at first glance, it looks and feels like one. But I have to say, for a folded or hollow bracelet, it's probably the best I've seen. The folds are on the inside, so it's not very noticeable. And it still has a pretty good weight to it. Although, on closer examination, it's because weights have literally been added to it. Now moving to the loom, it is also surprisingly good, at least for me. Although it's kind of hard not to be that good when there's that much loom applied to the hands. But beyond the minute and hour hands, everything else is decently visible. Even the small hands on the subdials, which is what I was most impressed with. For comparison, it's definitely brighter than a Timex Weekender Chrono. yet not quite as bright as Seiko's Lumabrite, which you can see here as I compare it to a Seiko SNZ-G. So it's very usable, and as I said, surprisingly good. So the movement. I was curious and took the back off, and I had a couple of interesting discoveries. First, the watch was not made in China, but rather India. Although India does have a lot of watchmaking, so it's not really a huge surprise. The other interesting thing is that it has a Japanese movement, even though it doesn't list it on the dial. It utilizes a Hattori VD57. Now, I believe Hattori is Seiko, as it's named after its founder. Although I'm not sure if it's just a branding or a subsidiary or why it doesn't just say Seiko. So if someone knows, feel free to comment. But as for accuracy, it's actually pretty good. Running about negative 0.1 seconds per day or about three seconds a month. So let's start wrapping things up with the dimensions. It's 44 millimeters wide without the crown, 47 millimeters width. Lug to lug is about 49 and a half, with a thickness of 
just over 13 millimeters. Strap width is 22, and it weighs about 173 grams. Wearing the watch, I feel like the lugs are just a little long, and perhaps the watch as a whole is just a little bit big for my 7 inch wrist, but not by much. Otherwise, on that bracelet, it's actually quite comfortable to wear. Now, looking at the Decker from a collector's or a watch enthusiast standpoint, there really isn't anything unique or special about it. But there's not much wrong with it either. It's just a decent, everyday watch. Which is the real reason that I wanted to take a look at a fossil. Not so much to add one to my collection, but more to get an overall sense of quality of the brand. And while it's not without its flaws, it did have a few nice surprises. So the MSRP on the Decker Chrono is about $135, but sometimes you can find them closer to 80 or 90. And while I'm not sure if it's truly a Speedmaster homage, it definitely borrows a little bit of it and overall has a pretty good look. My only real issue is the movement, and it's not that it's a bad movement, it's more the choice of having a tachometer with it. Now, while I think Seiko and Citizen have better quality, at the lower end of chronographs, as long as you have a decent movement, I think it's more about the style you want than anything else. So if you want a larger watch, say 44 millimeters or even bigger, with a more contemporary style, you probably want to keep looking at Fossil. For under $100, I think it's a decent watch. You're basically getting a decent Seiko movement that, in this case, has great accuracy. I wish the Chrono operated more traditionally, but that's more my preference, and not really anything wrong with the watch. But over $100, I think is where the value starts to end. Now as long as you're okay with a slightly smaller watch, there are a number of Seiko and Citizens in the low 100s. By just doing a quick search on Amazon, there are a couple of really nice looking Seikos right at 100. And right at the MSRP of the Fossil, at about 135, there is also a very similar looking Seiko in 40 millimeters, as well as a Solar Seiko and a Citizen EcoDrive. Or, for even a little bit more, you can get something a little more Newman-esque. Anyways, for me, especially when I prefer 40 to 42 millimeter watches, it's much harder to justify and recommend getting a Fossil when there are Seikos and Citizens at the same price. Especially if you can get a solar powered one. But in the end, it's more about the style you prefer as well as the prices you find. As I said, a Fossil Chrono under 100 bucks is not bad. So this is my first real experience with Fossil and I really wasn't sure what to expect. So while there are some flaws, there are a few nice surprises as well. Overall, it's a very decent, very accurate quartz watch. And for some people, sometimes that's all you need. Now, let me know in the comments what you think about Fossil. Are they still a fashion brand or have they grown beyond that? And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.